Hello and welcome to Sense Consulting's Maximo demonstration video series. Today we will be walking through entering time against a work order. The work order we're going to be using has been created in previous episodes of this demonstration video series. This is the work order that we converted from a service request to this work order. We then approved the work order and now we're going to enter time against the work order. To navigate to work order tracking, you can either use your favorite applications or as always if you don't have that favorite applications portlet, you can go to your go to menu, come down to the bottom here at work orders and hover your mouse over top. Then stay within the menu structure and go up to work order tracking, simply click. From there you'll need to find your work order. You can hit enter to return all records or if you know anything type of detail what have you about your work order you can enter it here within one of these fields. Now I know my work order number so I've entered it here and I will hit enter. Now we see that we have our work order for water leaking under boiler 3. So simply click the work order number and you will be taken to the work order screen. Next we need to look in this tab structure here and the tab that contains the labor transactions is the actual tab. So click actuals and you'll be redirected and you will see that here is the labor section. To add labor to this work order simply click new row. From here you'll be taken to the detail portion of the labor section. This kind of put in a new row and then it opened up the details. You can close them or open them. In this case we'll leave them open and the first thing we need to do is fill this required field for labor. Notice it has an asterisk next to it. To fill this field simply click your detail menu and select value. You can search by labor, record, name, craft, skill level, etc. And in this case, we're going to use the supervisor of our work order, Hunter. And we have John Hunter. His labor record is Hunter. We'll click his labor record, and it will autofill things like labor, name, craft, skill level, his rate, etc. So, the next thing we have to do is verify the start date, and this work took place yesterday, November 2nd. To do that, simply click the calendar icon, and you can navigate by month using these arrows, by year by clicking on the number, and notice how it jumps year to year. <clears throat> and you'll always be entering work labor against the work order that kind of happened in the past or the present so you'll probably get an error message if you try going too far into the future anyway just click off of that to close the menu and then to enter a specific start time click this clock and we'll say let's be reasonable mr hunter started at 8 a.m so then we'll click off of that and his start time is input now in our system you need to enter regular hours and the calculation in the system will occur for end date and end time. So we'll just say that four hours is how long it took him to work on this work order and you can see that the end date and end time have calculated correctly. So now we have our labor record against this work order. We have uh, entered time against the work order and the last thing we need to do before we're ready to exit is to click this floppy disk save icon. From here you can verify things and if you want to make a change by you know saying oh actually you know John Hunter took eight hours to do this you can quick edit here and then press your tab key and it will recalculate for you showing that the end time is now 4 p.m. You made a change, so no, never forget to save your work. And that completes our demonstration of entering time against the work order. 
Thank you for watching. Be sure to check back for more videos.